Hi guys, welcome back. Pine resin or pine pitch is something that's been used by our forefathers for thousands and thousands of years. In this video we're going to look at how to identify it, how to collect then process it. It's a useful resource to harvest whenever you come across it in the forest. And depending on how you process it, it's great for healing wounds, cuts and for repairing seals and joints. So just before we have a look at that, you may have heard about the recent hot spell that we're having over in the UK and some of the fires that have happened there in the northwest of the region on the moors. So yes guys, there's been, recently there's been some quite catastrophic scenes around this area. You've got uh, a place called Winter Hill. The, the whole of the ground has been on fire for some time and it's basically a, a boggy type area. We've had a fair few weeks of uh, heat so People have been careless, let's say, uh, and in the case of Winter Hill, one man has been reprimanded. Another area, Saddleworth Moor, has been on fire for, you could say, nearly two weeks now. And the guys out there have been in extreme conditions to try and manage that and, uh, and get it under control. So hats off to all the guys out there who are trying to manage the situation. But you've got to be really, really careful and cautious whenever you're lighting a fire. So I want, I'm not going to be lighting a fire today. It's always best to be on the safe side. And I don't want to risk other people's lives. On that note, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to get some combustibles for their fire making, but also um, I want to get some uh, resources to help me as far as any future projects I want to undertake. It's amazing how the uh, mind works really. I've memorised certain trees that I know are going to be uh, good for future projects or needs really. Pine pitch I think is what you say over in the USA and Canada. Um, here we tend to say resin. This is the type of thing that you're looking for. It generally has a white ivory wax-like appearance and is quite brittle. Where fresh resin is easy to manipulate, soft and uh, fairly malleable. All the little bits inside there, we can take them out another time. Well, that's not doing any harm to the tree at all. Um, we're just taking off excess residue. It's just tons of it up there, tons of it. Far more than there is here. I've seen this before being used in part of a recipe for, um, for chewing gum. You've got to add to it though, it's, apparently it tastes quite bland. But, uh, and piney. And there's a bit of a, an acquired taste. See tons of bark here with, with it all over. Now the thing is, it's a temptation to, to get your knife out and uh, and start to uh, scrape it. But this, this stuff really does stick. It's not something you would do if you can help it. Some nice pieces. You can smell the pine. It smells absolutely fantastic. I love it. As you can see, there's quite a lot, so I'll get on with this, collect some more, and get back to you soon. You can see a recent sort of stream going up there, yellow, coming out of this area. So if you ever want to start a fire, you can just dip a few twigs in there, or your tinder, and uh, that'll light no problem out there as it comes out. Beautiful. The pine's a coniferous tree, very hardy, and if you ever find yourself lost or you're in need of some certain supplies, then it can be your best friend. The pine needles can be steeped in hot water and give a very piney type flavour to what would be otherwise tasteless water. To extract the most benefit from the pine needles, you need to steep them for five to 10 minutes. That way you'll get as much vitamin C out of them as you can. The vitamin nutrients start to decrease the longer that they're steeping in the pot. 
If you've got a sore throat as well, if you chew on the fresh pine globules, the antibacterial properties will help with the inflammation and ease the pain. Another interesting fact, and I've never actually done this, is the, uh, the inner bark is edible. It can be eaten raw, it can be fried, boiled. If you're going to go out and try this as a bit of an experiment, let's say, then what you don't want to do is, is ring the tree, and that is take the bark from all the way around the, uh, the trunk of the tree, because that will just kill the tree off. Uh, you can take it from one side, preferably, I would look for fallen limbs and, and take it from there. There's so much on this tree really, look, we're in a bit of a collection now. I'll take that big piece of bark out and I'll use that uh, for tinder later on in fires. So I've had a little scout round and this tree's about the best, but um, I've got about half a pot there. So I'm going to have a little, so I'm going to have a little walk round and see what's about and see if there's anything else of interest in the forest today. Come on, follow me guys. I think that's cedar. And if this is cedar, I've never made a fire with this type of uh, bark. So I'm going to collect some in my little dump sack and see what it's like actually start a flame. I mean, it looks pretty straightforward. Got a nice collection there. The humidity is substantially low for this time of year. It's been dry for some time and the temperature's increasing. This coniferous forest is very dense and its main crop is pine. As I walk around, I'm checking for any signs of fire, keeping well alert. That includes sense of smell, any sign of smouldering or smoke or open flame. I'm also listening for any sounds of alarm from other people and on the lookout for any animals that might look like they're in panic or running away from danger. If this forest were to catch fire right now, whether that's from an open flame or transferred from a grass fire to the forest, then it would become an emergency situation. See, what I love about this type of uh, interest and hobby, you could say, is that people, other people enjoy it. There's a big following as far as uh, people into outdoor woodlands, uh, bushcraft, uh, and all other things to do with nature. But the big problem is, is people come and they leave things lying around this is uh, like a polyester type nylon string you got cans of beer and a fire there that looks like it's almost exploded from the inside out and that's disgusting so I've got what I need for today and for my little project so uh, we're three quarters full on the uh, container what I need to do now is mix the pine pitch or the resin with coals from the fire. Stick that combination onto a stick and I've got myself a little glue stick. I will show you when we get back to the uh, homestead. So here we are back at the homestead and uh, with me I've got a few tools and I've got a little mess tin and inside it I've got some coals from a previous fire that I collected for this demonstration. So as you can see I've got about a handful and I'm going to break the coals up using the stone that I've got and uh, the knife. And what I want is for the coals to be more of a powdery consistency. Some people like to do that with the resin. Crush it up when it's in its crystal form and then refine it with a knife. I like to just throw it into the, uh, the frying pan in a sense, uh, get it so it's soft and then take out any particles that don't really need to be in there. As you can see this is a decent quality yield so what I'll do is I'll take out any particles as I go through the process. So you 
remember from earlier on, uh, I found some cedar bark and never really used cedar in my fires. We'll see how that goes, see how it burns. And I only want a light flame really. Intense heat just gonna make the job more difficult and we wanna go at a nice, slow, steady pace here. Adding feather sticks intermittently helps regulate the heat. So when preparing the bonding stick, I'm getting rid of the knots and I start to feather the very tip so we can gather the pine and the tarry mixture as it starts to harden. At this point it can get quite hot the pan so you need to put some gloves on. Be careful not to boil the actual pitch or set it on fire. So you've got to keep your eyes on it and here I'm just adding the uh, coal dust and then more resin. So as a general rule I'll add one part coal dust, three parts resin but I'll also add beeswax to it as well. If you have no beeswax you can also use tallow what this does is it makes the material more flexible and easier to work with. You can also use other substrates to strengthen the glue. Rabbit droppings, sawdust or animal hair. And this process continues until you've got a, a nice sticky thick consistency. So I add more nuggets of resin. Heat that up over the flame. Take out any bits that I don't need. I can always use them, uh, put them in my tinder pouch. They'll easily catch a spark and continue on the flame for some time. At this point, I'm adding beeswax. And that's gonna liquefy the solution somewhat. But as the solution starts to cool down, what you'll see is the recipe will all start to come together and start to bond. As it cools down it goes from a liquid viscous type of uh, material and it starts to thicken up and it gets to the point where you can twist your bonding stick and it starts to gather around the tip forming sort of like a ball that's where the most material starts to gather so you continue the process and get as much of the material off the pan as you can and as it cools down more it'll get to the point where it's malleable but what you want to do is you want to test uh, test this out first on your hand before you start to squeeze it just tap it onto your hand or what I do is I usually get some coal dust put it on my hand as a bit of protection first once you're happy with the consistency and you're happy with the temperature start to manipulate the material until you're happy with the end product as you can see this is forming nicely now it feels right to me so what you can do to test that out is tap it on the end of the wood, that sounds good. Or alternatively you could use a stone or a pebble. And as long as it doesn't shatter, you know it's good to go. Mm -hmm. 